Hello everyone, this is Jimmy, and welcome to episode 1 of Insulation Route, the brand new mod pack we'll be playing. It is a almost all tech focused mod pack, uh, if we count Batania as tech, which I generally speaking do, that does away with the premise of Minecraft being a survival game. Let's create a world before I get motion sick from that uh, main menu. So, as usual, we will turn on cheats just in case anything is broken make sure you leave void type as a void question mark world the c doesn't matter this is a skyblock esque kind of pack i'll show you what i mean in a second um besides that i don't think we need to change anything so let's go you may notice that my voice sounds slightly different from uh, previous videos i'm trying something different using a compressor to uh smooth out like the highs and lows in my voice hopefully it means that when i'm like really excited it, i don't blow your ears out and uh, if i'm whispering a little bit i'm not too quiet so anyways this is a quest pack we have quests as you see uh if you are just downloading this pack it's normally so that you only see quests that you're connected to um but i change it such that i can see all the quests because i like seeing what's coming up ahead so we start here part zero and we get some supplies all right uh as we can see here we start in a room this room is our box there are many like it but this is my box and uh we can't get out of the box we live in the box Getting out of the box is basically the goal of the pack. Uh, I think we can, yeah, we can break these pillars if we want to get rid of them. I think maybe we can get rid of these later. So we can have a true flat box. But uh, this is just my kind of pack. We don't even have to build a base. We spawn in a vase with walls. I think as time pa uh, passes, there are various quests that can expand your box to give you additional rooms to your box or something. I don't know the exact details. I haven't played that far, but... um. Yeah, we'll we'll find out as we go. So anyways, we start with the crafting table. Excellent. And a fabricator. So the fabricators are a key part of this pack. As you can see here, this fabricator generates blocks every 35 ticks, and it's a cobble fabricator. So based on that, I'm going to assume that it generates cobblestone. Uh, spoiler, I, I know that it generates cobblestone. So we can set our allocation. I kind of want to raise it up a block. One second. What are no, that's not where I want it. Uh the the generator block generator whatever does not auto output so you need something that can pull or push from it um so i'm gonna put this here oh can't pick can't pick that up with the wrench all right hold on we're gonna put this here and then configure this thing to pull and push all right so now we are we, we start the game with a cobblestone generator excellent um some quests here tells us we don't have to fight woohoo I hate fighting on Minecraft. And in this void box, your stomach no longer yada yada. We don't have to eat. Excellent. Uh, so first quest, make five furnaces. This thing makes one piece of cobblestone every, what was it like two seconds, 35 ticks. So um, yeah, we, we wait like two minutes. Not, not quite two minutes. We need what, 40 pieces of cobblestone? We wait about a minute and a half to get 40 pieces of cobble. While we wait, let's take a look at some of the other quests. So... Starting off here, we, it's basically just an introduction to this, uh, these fabricators. And then going from there, this is actually a relatively lightweight pack. There's not many mods, as we can see, uh, it's here in JAI, there's only 22 pages of items, as opposed to, like, the 200 pages we sometimes see in some packs. Of course, not every, you know, some mods add a lot more pages than others. But anyways, um, after a little bit, there's thermal expansion-y stuff, there is no Ender IO no refined storage and no applied energistics that is a interesting thing about this pack there instead we'll be using thermal and or not thermal uh yeah it's thermal logistics here we go um thermal logistics provides a it's similar to uh the logistics pipes mod um except it integrates with thermal pipes instead of its own pipes and uh, like we get a terminal we get auto crafting so i look forward to learning how to use thermal logistics to provide our item networking. Anyways, I've managed to lab long enough that we can make some furnaces. When we do that, now we get a wood fabricator. Excellent. Uh, let's just set all these sides to input. So now we are producing cobblestone every 35 ticks and wood every however many ticks this thing was. 60 ticks. So every three seconds, we get a piece of wood. All right, next quest is to make chests and sticks. Easy enough. Chests, how many chests was it? Two chests, 12 sticks. One, two chests, 
and not enough sticks. Do we have the... Oh, we do have this recipe. Nice. I love the recipe to make chests directly out of planks. Alright, so that gives us three more fabricators. Magnetite, that's iron. Cassiterite, I believe that's tin. And... Chow... Chow... Cop... Uh, it's chocolate fabricator. That's, um... What's it called? Uh, Copper. There we go. But it's... I, I'm just gonna call it a... Uh, a uh, chocolate fabricator. So, put these here. Um, and now every, I think it said what, like 220 ticks? So every 11 seconds, we should get a piece of, there we go, iron ore, and tin ore, and chocolate ore. Excellent. So, um, for now, because we only have, we were only given this one item allocator, we can only extract, you know, so many items at a time, right? Uh, but now we can make hoppers because we have iron. So let's set up our furnaces. Um, I'm going to set them up one block off the ground, I think. So we can put hoppers and stuff to automate it later. And uh, yeah, we can start smelting ores. Where right off the bat, we get access to metals. That I love. Uh, let's start actually by making some charcoal as well. Um, but yeah, there's this pack, you know, like most sky blocks, there's absolute, absolutely no mining, but there's not even any sifting. We got to hit the ground running. The next quest is to smelt two of each of those ingots, and that gives us another fabricator. This makes living matter, and uh, living matter is a custom mechanic to this pack. So let's get a couple of each of these ingots. And I'll show you what it does in just a second. Also gives us a Lexica Batania. I think Batania is used pretty extensively in the early game of this pack. So uh, we'll be using it a bunch. Um, let's replace the wood fabricator for now with this. Whoopsies. All right, so the, uh, this fabricator makes living matter, which can be used to craft various things, sugarcane, feathers, seeds, saplings. Um, but for now, I think we wanted to make dirt and bone meal. So uh, this is as far as I got in my test world. So anything past here, I don't know anything about. Why don't my pins show up? There we go. Um, bone meal is made with some dried matter and planks, so I just need to take... Of this living matter, throw it in a smelter or a furnace, and then get some planks from the wood. Uh, in the meantime, I'm going to keep smelting any of the these uh, ores that we generate, so we can continue to make basic things like hoppers. It's been a while since I've seen the standard hopper recipe in a mod pack. Um, you know, none, none of this plates business, and I'm okay with that. All right, so let's set it up like this, where we can have, uh, what is this one? That one's wood, works for me. And then we can put another chest here and put our cobble fabricator here and then just stagger these up and down, the, you know, up the wall so to conserve space because space is a limited resource for once. I don't think I've ever played a pack where, well, I guess in a, uh, Rustic water, space was kind of a limited resource, right? It wasn't a strictly limited resource, but it was like, it was somewhat difficult to expand. So if you ran out of space, you had to, you know, dig out or get rid of a whole bunch of water. This is similar, except we can't expand at all. So that's our bone meal. For dirt, we need more of this dried living matter and living matter. All right. Once we have some dirt, we can use the quartz dirt trick to uh, make additional dirt. I think it's easier to get gravel than it is the dried living matter because you have to, uh, you have to, uh, what's the, you have to smelt the living matter for that. So in this pack, if you break cobblestone with a shovel, it it's as if you were breaking gravel. Um, which is kind of weird. Like every now and then you get flint, but most of the time you get a piece of gravel. So with this, you can, well, okay, I didn't get very lucky, but you can craft that to make coarse dirt and then place a coarse dirt, right click it with a shovel to or a hoe, make it either path or, uh, path or farmland. And then when you break it, you get, whoopsies, get regular dirt back. Neat little trick. Crafting the dirt rewards us with pasture seeds, and that ends the first part of part zero. I think this is kind of 
late gamey stuff that just happens to be in this tab. So we're now on to part one. Now there's a bit of a jump here. To complete part one, we have to make, or to enter part one, we have to make mana. And there's kind of no quest in between. So we're, we're a little bit on our own, but um, I think we can figure out how to use Batania to make mana. First of all, I'm going to continue our dirt duplication a little bit. Just so we have enough dirt to uh, do Batania on, right? Because most of the things have to be planted on dirt. To get started in Batania, we're going to need to make the Petal Apothecary. This is where we craft flowers. And for that, we're going to need any petal. Um, let's start with the white petal, because we're going to need that to make the flower first. So, white petals can be crafted, well, any color flower can be crafted in this patch using these custom Bifrost petals. So, turn living matter into this, and then that makes white flowers. Uh, because of how easy it is to make flowers, I'm just going to make a handful of these right off the bat. And, whoopsies. White is exactly this recipe. So they're kind of like the UU Matter recipes with the item form UU Matter. Um, all right, so with that, we can make a Petal Apothecary. And hopefully, yeah, one of these will do. And then some seeds. I believe seeds are also, yeah, just crafted with this Living Matter. Living Matter is pretty precious. There we go. Uh, we could, of course, like grow them in a farm. Um, but that's more work than just crafting the uh, seeds. Also, standard bucket recipe, and we can fill our bucket with water using living matter as well. So now we have two buckets of water. Two buckets of water is the magic amount of water we need to make an infinite water source. So let's just put an infinite water spring right here, and we can use this to craft our flowers. So water in there we're gonna start with pure daisies so that's four white petals and a seed nice the pure daisy lets us transmute various blocks into their uh, batania form so stone to living rock wood to living wood uh, those are the important ones for now there's it can be used as part of some type of ore processing later on uh, in fact we can even start it now we can take our is it yeah, all the ores we have can be purified, although we can't process purified ore yet. But it looks like if we purify it, we get up to like 7x yield, as opposed to, I think the normal ore probably only gets us 2x, if I had to guess. Yeah. The pure daisy works as it always has in Batania, so just surround it with the block you want to transmute. We don't have any builder's wands yet, so... uh I have this set up to like accept a builder's wand basically we use a builder's wand to place these blocks but builder's wands i haven't actually found any in the pack even i mean a batania has one of the batania wands is a builder's wand right um this pack doesn't have a lot of the like the mod list is quite short so some of the tools we're used to might just not exist in this pack we're gonna have to make do with other stuff so uh, yeah we get to do things differently um but for now we'll do it the manual way here with uh, transmutation. Place the blocks down, wait a minute, and then pick them back up. So uh, that can lead into a mana pool and some type of mana generation. In fact, maybe we can make mana generation now. Um, let's see. The early type mana generation in Botania probably comes from... Well, can we make... We can make endo flames directly so let's just do this for now an endo flame will take uh will take furnace fuels for now charcoal and turn them into uh turn it into mana so this is just a couple of petals and harvest the living rock to make the endo flames then just throw two browns a gray a red petal and a seeds then fill it with water and repeat then with our living wood and living rock there to be short a piece of living wood where is it oh, i fell into here all right we can make a mana pool to hold mana i assume that's made like that and then a mana spreader to transfer mana uh how is this made uh it uses a copper ingot doesn't what normally goes here Maybe a gold ingot? That's the best guess I have. Alright, so a mana pool and a mana spreader. Uh, a mana pool here, put the spreader here. 
later we can make flowers that don't have to be planted directly on grass that'll save us a little bit of space but for now we were planted on dirt i guess but for now it does have to be planted on dirt so we make do with what we've got anyways uh these should automatically bind to the nearest spreader so bind this to that and we're good now just throw down any burnable fuel for now that'll be charcoal and then i guess it's slightly better to use blocks right let me see if i can scrounge together some charcoal blocks i need four blocks there we go i think we get or four blocks yeah it blocks take nine pieces but give you the burn time of ten that's value so let's throw it there they will start burning it excellent and that's our first little bit of mana so with that mana we can transmute magnetite ore into cold ore so give me five pieces of this and not enough mana all right it looks like it takes a fair bit of mana to do this uh i mean a mana pool holds a tremendous amount of mana but we've been like this mana pool is not even one percent pool so we'll just i guess wait we have enough for one piece there we go um this bar i think is 10x zoomed in so like even this little bit you have to shrink it by 10x to for how much it actually takes out of a mana pool but uh for now this is what we get in fact right now we're early enough maybe i should look into some purely passive mana generation there's the oh maybe they're disabled in this pack uh hydrogen i think this is purely passive it generates from uh water sources but it's not very good yeah the, the ones that generate just by like existing are disabled so i guess we you know what we'll just keep burning coal that's okay two three almost there i think we've waited long enough that there we go we can make five pieces of this uh gold ore so aluminum is can be used as replacement for iron got it how do we make aluminum why do we have this quest right now i don't know does this quest no that doesn't reward us an aluminum generator who knows all right well uh this is telling us that we can bash gravel to make or bash cobble to make gravel and sand let's do that really quickly where's my shovel oh sand is slightly different it's bashing smooth stone with the shovel not gravel there we go all right that leads into item pipes use cork pipes to do simple item transport all right um yeah yada 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 these are cheap and easy to make uh can they extract let's see who knows let's uh make something try it here are item pipes and let's see if we can use that to extract from our furnaces into a chest um what would i configure it with probably a wrench of some sort let's see yeah not doing anything looks like the pipes themselves cannot extract however if they're inserted with some other mods piping or even just basic hoppers the items will flow around randomly excellent well these pipes are a little stupid then aren't they instead of using the pipes we just straight up hopper chain into the chest where uh we don't have the flow rate problem whatever forget that um next up we have fluid pipes so uh these are just wooden fluid pipes it says that they can get like encrusted i guess so they're probably not meant for long-term use next quest is to make redstone so the quest for that says we make it out of levers i think if i just get a whole bunch of uh levers let's see give me sticks sticks and cobble makes levers that's vanilla recipe about the extent of my vanilla knowledge and then we throw this in here um looks like it doesn't use all that much mana the little bit of mana we had made 30 pieces of redstone 
That allows us to make a pulverizer, does it now? Ooh, and that even gives us more, uh, more fabricators. Alright, let's see how we can make the pulverizer. Uh, that's easy. Oh, this is a standard machine frame recipe. We can even make gears by hand. We're living the good life. Turns out smelting gold ore for gold nuggets is uh, not very efficient. We only get two nuggets per. But for now, this is our only way of getting gold. But once I get uh, the 10 gold nuggets, we can make our pulverizer, which I suspect can process gold ore a bit more efficiently. Let's actually just check that. Gold ore, so it's two in there. Um, let's see. No, well, we get four. I assume this is, yeah, tidy dust. So we, we only get four out of the pulverizer. So I guess even that's not a terribly efficient gold-making way, but uh, we make do with what we've got. All right, so make one of these. Then some gears. I miss having the... Uh, actually, do we have the tinkers? No, we don't. We don't have the crafting table that can link to an inventory. Um, is there a workbench of some sort that could do that, maybe? This is similar. But does it link to adjacent inventories? I somehow doubt it. Alright, whatever. We'll, uh, we'll make do without it. Make me some machine frames and one pulverizer. Now, we can't power this. Well, we can power this right now, but our only way of powering it... Where do we put it, even? Put it here. We'll replace a lot of these furnaces later. Our only way of powering it is by putting redstone in this slot, I believe. No, it doesn't accept redstone. Never mind. Um, so I guess we can't power it at all. All right, cool. Well, that gives us some stuff. Uh, let's put this stuff somewhere to continue feeding this uh, chest. To power our um, pulverizer, we're going to need dynamos of some sort. Dynamo. And uh, all dynamos require transmission coils, which require a little bit of silver. So, much like with gold, we can or we can transmute iron to gold, we can transmute galena into silver. And then we can smelt this and get silver nuggets. Again, each uh, when processed this way, each ore only produces two nuggets. Also rearrange our wall a little bit so that everything has its own chest. We're no longer dumping everything into one universal chest. And this is a pretty neat system, I think. Um, anyways, we're going to continue to rely pretty heavily on, uh, on charcoal for power and other things. So I'm just going to continue making, you know, continue smelting charcoal. Let's start with the humble steam dynamo because uh, it's the easiest one to craft. So we'll take this, we'll take some of our charcoal, um, may as well turn it into blocks. And we will, yeah, just start it off in this corner. Uh, these pipes, I'm told, can pump water. So if we uh, make an infinite water spring here. And then hit the pipe with a piston, it says. There we go. Uh, is it pumping water? Maybe it needs to be in the water to do that. Let's try that instead. We put the pipe in the water. And give it the piston. How do we make you pump water? I think I may have misunderstood what it meant by pumping. Uh, I think it might mean pump as an extract from a tank, not extract from the world. In which case, we can use an aqueous accumulator to pump from the world. And... Uh... Don't we... Oh, you are working. But I thought we had to set the water sides on input. Um... Auto output to this. There we go, it is working. Water flows into our steam dynamo. And then from here, we put fuel in this, and this makes RF. Notice how this the dynamo holds one, is it one tick worth? No, only 10 ticks worth of production. One thing about this pack is that all internal storage has been gutted for RF. There is basically no RF storage in the dynamo. There's there is no RF storage in the uh, pulverizer. In fact, let's rotate our pulverizer. Um, and flux ducts. While they exist, also do not have, you know, their internal storage is their, uh, 
is their RF capacity. So they don't they don't have a large internal storage either. Basically, energy is energy storage is intentionally not a thing in this pack. So um yeah, we'll have relatively low amounts of energy storage throughout the entire pack. There are some tricks we can do later that will give us some storage, like using capacitors as storage, but uh in the end it's supposed to be, you know, you generate the energy you need and use it right then and there. So anyways, um if I want to transfer energy, we do need flux ducts. Can't make invar yet, so we can't make the hardened variant, but uh is it two lead ingots? Yeah. There we go. Now that we can power our pulverizer, we can then take some of these things like the galena, magnetite, uh, and pulverize it. So we only have basic machines right now. They're a little bit on the glacially slow side. But uh, one dynamo, one magmatic, or one steam dynamo can power one pulverizer. And this makes galena dust. So this dust can be directly smelted for one lead ingot, or it can be transmuted into silver, or if we make a centrifugal separator, we can take 12 galena dust. This is basically, I mean, uh, I think the quest even says it's modeled off the, uh, somewhere here. It's modeled off the Greg Tech version of ore processing, where, you know, you can take dust and break them down in a centrifuge or a uh, electrolyzer um, for similar results. So Galena can be processed like that. Likewise, Magnetite can be processed. Again, we can smelt it into one ingot. If we pulverize it, we can get two dust out of it. But with these two dusts, we can then or if we get 12 dust, we can centrifuge that to get a pulverized, to get gold. So this way, out of six pieces of ore, or six pieces of magnetite ore, we get one gold and 11 iron. Whereas if we just wanted gold from it with our old processing, we would basically get, you know, 12 nuggets of gold, right? A little bit over one gold. So uh, yeah, this gives us much higher yields. Oh boy, is the centrifugal, centrifugal separator slow though. Uh, yeah, it's progressing very slowly. The other problem we're going to run into is that the flux duct here is going to run out of energy, and our dynamo only produces 25 RF a tick. So I believe what happens is if the machines are not receiving enough energy, they just straight up don't work. Um, let's see what happens in just a second when this runs out. Does it reset the progress, or it does reset the progress? That's really bad. That basically means that uh, we have to overproduce energy, right? Between the fact that we basically don't have a buffer, the conduit buffer is relatively small, and um, the fact that machines reset their progress without energy means that in order to run two machines at a time, we're going to need a second dynamo. Double the machines, double the dynamos. So two dynamos power two machines just fine, and they should both be... I guess it doesn't evenly load both dynamos oh dynamos in this pack don't uh power down even when their buffer is full they continue to produce full energy i kind of wonder what that uh has to, if this fixes that basically normally right a, a dynamo when it when its internal buffer is full um its power output drops to 10 percent of its max output which causes it to burn fuel at 10 percent speed uh, but this, because it can't drop its maximum power, means that it continues to burn fuel at a 100% rate. I, I'm actually quite curious. Um, is this difficult to make? No, not at all. But it does require the upgrade kit. So let's make the hardened upgrade kit our next goal. For this, we need steel. Uh, Invar's not that bad. Bronze we can make. And a rune. So the steel has to be made in an induction smelter. The other two... Uh, Alloys, we can pulverize the dust and mix them by, or pulverize ingots and mix by hand. But steel has to be made in an induction smelter. So let's make one of these. Doesn't look too bad. And then we'll look at the Batania rune. Our induction smelter made. We can start making steel. The uh, It's a little bit expensive to make it with charcoal, but this is what we have right now. So that's that. For the upgrade kit then, uh, well, okay, let's start a little bit of bronze as well. Um, where are my tin ingots? There's a fair bit of tin. Do I have copper in here too? We'll run this in the induction smelter. Tin and 21 copper. This will be a pretty large batch of bronze. Alright, so the upgrade kit uses any of the tier 1 Batania runes. So these are the runes of the elements. 
uh, water, fire, earth, or air. It doesn't take mana, does it? No, I guess mana is... Rune of mana? Oh, here it is. I guess it's... Does Rune of mana count as a tier 2 rune? I've always counted it as tier 1 because it doesn't... Like, all the tier 2 runes are made from tier 1 runes, but I don't know, whatever. Um, yeah, so these runes are made from mana powder, which is... We can do gunpowder or... Can we make gunpowder? Not easily. Not yet. So I guess we'll make it from redstone for now. Uh, mana steel, which can we make it from iron? Yes, and it's better if we make it from aluminum, but I don't think we get aluminum or... Oh, here we go. We can transmute considerate to aluminum. I forget it. I'll just... I don't know. It doesn't really matter. We have a lot of iron or aluminum right now, so that's easy come, easy go. Bone meal we can make, sugar cane we can craft. And in fact, let's... uh. Craft some sugarcane and just set up a very basic vanilla sugarcane farm. I assume there's no snad in the pack, right? Optimistic thinking. Let's start small on this farm. It'll take it some time to grow a bit of sugarcane. So during that time, let's make the altar that we do the crafting on. The runic altar. So this requires a mana pearl or pearl diamond or a mana infused ingot. I assume... Uh, no, it's not the ingot that we're going to make. Is it going to be a pearl? A mana pearl requires ender air. We were given two ender air as a quest reward. Ah, is there a quest for that later on? Am I, am I getting ahead of myself here? Let's take a look. Doesn't look like it. All right, so how am I supposed to get the, uh... A diamond? Can I get a diamond somehow? I think we can get a diamond with 40 coal and TNT. Coal can just be crafted, so it's stone and dried matter, that's easy. TNT requires some gunpowder, which... Can we make this? Nope. Um, how do I get gunpowder? I guess I have to make it this way. Sulfur comes from pulverizing coal. Yikes, this kind of sucks. Sulfur comes from pulverizing coal. Is there any other way? Centrifugal... Okay. Centrifugal separating chocolate gets us sulfur. The coal or charcoal comes from pulverizer. The niter comes from pulverizing probably just like sandstone and hoping for the best. I don't see a better plan. I realized I made my bronze with the ratio backwards. Uh, I had 3 to 1 copper tin to copper instead of 3 to 1 copper to tin. So you know what? Just make however much you can, and we'll end up with leftovers, and I'll deal with it. I feel like I should have made another pulverizer to help speed up the process of making this TNT. Uh, the TNT takes a lot of sand to make, both like because it takes five pieces in the crafting recipe, and the uh, production of uh, niter consumes sand. Like you get less sand in, or when you pulverize for this, right? It takes four pieces of sand to make sandstone, but you only get two pieces back, so you lose a little bit of sand in the process. But anyways, I think we finally have enough now, so that's that, and a fourth piece of TNT with 40 pieces of coal. All right, turn this into a diamond, please. Oh boy, that's a slow recipe. All right, well, eventually turn that into a diamond, please. There's something weird going on with my power. But right now I'm running all three of these machines, right? Three times 20 is 60 RF per tick. Two dynamos produce 50 RF per tick, which means my uh, flux duct should be emptying, but it's not. This dynamo is doing a weird thing where like when its internal buffer empties, it just refills itself for some reason. Um, and I, if you, if you look very closely, for one tick, it produces 250 RF a tick. And I, for the life of me, have no clue why. Maybe 250 is its full output, and 25 is its empty output? But then... No, because if that's the case, why aren't you doing the same thing? Right? Like, I, I don't know what's different between these two dynamos that's causing this one to produce 250 RF a tick for one tick when it's empty. But, uh... I feel like it's kind of cheating, because it shouldn't be doing that. But nothing I can do... Nothing I can do about it. I'm just going to take my free RF and be happy with that. Also, produce a little bit more fuel. I do like how this entire place is lit up. I mean, I think mob spawns are disabled, but 
also lit up so I don't have to worry about uh, mob spawns or any of that fun stuff. Alright, so there's my diamond. Almost. 93%. Here is my diamond. Take that, turn it into a mana diamond. I've been throwing more coal onto our endo flames from time to time. And right now our mana pool is even like, I don't know, looks about a third-ish full. And that was apparently a quest. What did that give us? This is a exchanging gadget, I think. Um, but it does require a tablet to use. And a mana tablet requires one of these things. So uh can't do that yet. Because I'm using this mana diamond to make the runic altar. So five of this. And one runic altar. Wait, some mana at the runic altar with a mana spreader. Um this probably isn't the best place for a mana spreader because eventually we're gonna have to put the uh mana pool modifier there, but we can move it later. Throw the bits on. And it crafts. So with just a single basic mana spreader, this takes it a little while. Takes it a lot while. When the bar fills up, put a living rock on it. Right click it with their wand. And we're going to do it again. Just so we have a couple more runes. We do get two a craft, which is pretty nifty. Let's craft our upgrades now. And hopefully that'll make our machines a little bit less painfully slow. Uh, it looks like it doubles the processing rate. A little bit less than double because energy per, per operation goes up a little bit. But uh, by and large, I'm okay with this. So take this, apply it to each of our machines. And I assume that'll cause our generators to start emptying. Yeah, so now this dynamo is no longer doing the thing. Weird. Upgrade the dynamos as well. These, so two dynamos make 100 RF. Three machines use 120, which means this number should be going down if all our machines are running. But not all our machines are running. Alright, that's fine. Um, anyways, let's also make that uh, that one augment. Which was it called? Excitation field limiter? And s just see what that does. If it doesn't work the way I expect, we'll swap it out for the more RF produced one, probably. Um, just so that I can get both these machines. Well, hold on. Oh yeah, so, so two machines can produce uh, as much, you know, can produce the right amount of energy for three... So two dynamos can produce enough energy to run three machines. Alright, so right now this machine, this dynamo, it's, we're only extracting 30 RF a tick out of it, but it's still producing 50. If I do this... Yeah, okay, so this causes it to, I think it produces zero until it's needed. But then for some reason, instead of producing 50, it produces 500. Uh, do you do the same thing if I put you here? No, because we are extracting the full amount out of you. Man, I have no clue if this actually helps or not. Um, let's really quick turn off, well, you turn yourself off, because apparently I gave you a half batch of processing. And yeah, now they're both doing the thing. Wait. No, now you are producing zero. And this one machine produces enough power. Right now, one dynamo produces enough power for one machine. So only one dynamo is running. So to prevent fuel wastage, I think the excitation field limiter is very good here. Uh, and this machine works as expected. I think it produces 50. I honestly have no clue. This is doing something very weird. And you know what? I'm not going to question it. We're producing power. We're using fuel. Probably, maybe, possibly. And our machines are running. Um, into these machines we'll put the, uh, the speed upgrades because that'll make them faster. But I think, uh, we're out of time for today. So next, uh, episode we'll upgrade our machines to be faster. Um, continue adding more machines so that we can, like, perhaps get redstone furnaces to replace all of these furnaces, which will also dramatically reduce our charcoal expenditure, um, and work from here. Let's complete. All right, well, uh, I hope you guys en enjoyed this video and uh, we'll look forward to the rest of this series. I think this will be a relatively interesting, maybe a little bit shorter series, but uh, very different from anything we've done before. So uh, yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it and I hope to see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.